Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration on how to bleed your brakes using a vacuum pump. Also, don't forget to check out my website at www.4diyers.com or click on the link in the description below. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel for future tutorial videos. If you've replaced a wheel cylinder, caliper, flex line, brake lines, master cylinder, or any other brake components associated with brake fluid, you will need to bleed the air out of the system. Other times, if your brake does feel spongy, air could possibly be present in the lines, and we will need to bleed that. This applies to both disc and drum brakes. For this example, I'll be working with disc brakes. When working with brake fluid, do not allow it to come in contact with the paint, either by dripping or even any residue on your hands. Brake fluid can damage your vehicle's paint. Safely elevate the vehicle and remove the wheel. Sometimes you can pull the vehicle onto ramps. Depending on the design, you'll have access to a bleeder screw from behind the wheel. With this vehicle here, I'm working with a 1997 BMW 540i and have just upgraded the rubber flex lines to braided stainless steel versions. Always keep an eye on the fluid level in the master cylinder reservoir as we don't want the fluid level dropping past the minimum line. If it does drop past the minimum line, we do risk air entering the system. Ensure that the master cylinder reservoir is clean. Wipe off any dirt or loose debris with a rag. This reduces the chance of any dirt entering the system. When adding more fluid, use the correct fluid that is required for your vehicle. When using a vacuum pump, they normally can be purchased in a kit, which comes with a variety of accessories such as hoses, bleeder screw fittings, and a reservoir. The reservoir is intended to catch the fluid when there is a vacuum present in the lines, so the fluid does not come in contact with the pump. Here I'll be installing the hose from the vacuum pump directly on the bleeder screw as it has a tighter fit than compared to any of the bleeder screw fittings. Locate the bleeder screw. For calipers, they are located on the back side towards the top. For drum brakes, the bleeder screw will be on the wheel cylinder exposed to the backing plate. Clean off the area around the bleeder screw so there is no chance of dirt contaminating the area we're working with. Be sure you're able to get the bleeder screw loose as these can seize up over time. Use either the boxed end of a wrench or a socket to loosen the bleeder screw. This will reduce the chance of stripping it. Now place the wrench onto the bleeder screw and then install the rubber hose from the vacuum pump. Pump the vacuum up to 25 inches of mercury so there is a negative pressure present at the bleeder screw. This must be done otherwise we do risk introducing air into the system. I have done a leak down test already between the pump and bleeder screw and there is no signs of any vacuum leakage. If you find there is a small sign of leakage between the hose and the bleeder screw you can use a zip tie or a cable tie. Do not allow the vacuum pressure to go below 5 inches of mercury as we don't want to risk the chance of any air entering the system. Always keep a negative pressure at the bleeder screw. If we get to 5 inches of mercury we can either close up the bleeder screw then pump it up back to 25 inches of mercury or keep pumping up the vacuum when the bleeder screw is open. Break the bleeder screw with the wrench and you will notice fluid immediately entering the clear hose. You may notice bubbling in the clear hose and this can be either from air which is present in the system or air leaking around the bleeder screw threads. Therefore it can be hard to determine if all the air is out of the system. For this I will be removing some fluid from the lines only just enough to enter the reservoir cup of the vacuum pump. Then test the brake pedal afterwards. What we are looking for here is a hard pedal. If you find the pedal does feel soft or spongy there is most likely air still in the system. Repeat the procedure if the pedal is soft or spongy. Once finished, ensure the bleeder screw is tight. Then continue this procedure for the rest of the wheels if need be. Dispose of any excess fluid correctly and replenish the master cylinder reservoir. Pump the brakes and inspect for any leaks. If you have accidentally touched the rotors or any brake fluid does get spilt on the braking system, we do not want this as this can affect our braking surface, therefore jeopardizing the braking performance. Therefore, this will need to be cleaned up immediately before brake usage. This concludes the rest of my tour video. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to post them below. Also, please subscribe to my channel and like my video. Thank you for watching.